Hello guys and welcome back to another episode here on the Wolven Galaxy SMP server. There has been a lot of things happening on the server recently and you may have already spotted it in the previous episode, the time lapse that we ended off on. I only did a little bit of the section over here, but there's been a lot more progress done. And a lot of this has been done on streams, not just by myself, but by Mountain Tiger, 144, Dark Wolf Destroys, and all the other people here on the server have all been taking part in changing this whole section around to be just grass. Now, there is a lot of things that I need to do, but I'm going to be starting to record the next section. While doing this live, I'm going to start building the new mob farm that will be placed directly below the gorgeous beacon which a lovely mountain tiger decided to dig out coming all the way down here you can see that this whole chunk has been removed and is ready to start placing in some sort of mob farm that's going to be automated at redstone i've got a lot of redstone resources to gather to craft and also make up and ready to go so if you're looking forward to the future of this wolven galaxy smp server then go ahead and click that like button and also click the subscribe button <sighs> mountain tiger mountain tiger a big thank you to Mountain Tiger, actually, who's sitting right here. He's absolutely awesome. He did all the building work that happened in regards to this whole section. Um, basically, well, he didn't do all the building work. He did all the destruction. This whole chunk was mined out by this yours truly, Mountain Tiger 144. And, well, I did kind of build the farm, but there was a slight bit of an issue. The video files got corrupted on my hard drive. Yeah, OBS, you're brilliant sometimes, but sometimes... You are absolutely terrible, and I mean it seriously terrible. What I am going to do is very quickly show you what a layer looks like up above, and then we'll jump back into the rest of this video. Looking at each uh, each level, uh, Mountain Tiger is going to be my test subject, which is going to be absolutely brilliant, because in a second the water is going to be turned on because someone's actually using the farm at the moment. He's going to get shoved down to that little section down there, unless he stands, and I'm not joking, right in this corner. You might just about be lucky. Or you might not be. Hi, Mountain. This is where Depth Strider books become absolutely imperative. Uh, while he's doing that, this is what happens. There's a torch tower that goes down to the very bottom with a redstone clock. Each layer has a layer that's on and then a layer that's off. As a person presses the pressure plate, that torch will turn off, allowing this section of redstone to be turned off. And that means this block here is no longer powered constantly. This allows this redstone clock to go backwards and forwards by the normal ether hopper clock. It works brilliantly. It moves the pistons up and down and has a certain number of blocks that moves it about. And then very soon, one will swap over and that sends a pulse using this repeater into the redstone torch tower all the way up this level. And it's as simple as that. Now let's go back over to the rest of the video where I'm discussing with Mountain Tiger and everything else. Coming to the very back of the whole hopper system once a mob drops down, they head down, the items come down here, head into this drop evator which heads into the item sorter that is up here sorting out the items away from string, rotten flesh, bones, gunpowder, you name it, it's sorted out into its reasonable chests. This is the design of the killing chamber or where you stand to do all the killing and the enchantment and anything that you require uh, there's a couple of new members on the server as well big massive welcome to those go check out them on the wolf and galaxy website wolf they're all been added or just check out what's up on the discord and this bit here is the redstone lever that enables this farm to be constantly active so you don't have to stand on the pressure plate let's see what's next up in this video one thing i'm trying to do this episode as well is try and limit my clips down to the maximum of about 30 seconds long this includes time lapses so i do apologize if you enjoy the longer time lapses this is just an experiment to see how well the retention rates receive in this video right this second just down here our friend doug wolf destroy is currently in the middle of making a parkour course which i'll tell you what looks like it's going to be one very fun interesting type build and i can't wait for it to happen i really cannot wait to actually have some go on it now i must say i am rubbish at parkour <laughs> so this might be a fun episode when that comes out stay tuned click subscribe and then you'll be able to see when that episode comes out in between the last couple of episodes i've also been a little bit busy down here now you may notice there's a little of a trip by hook farm so it means i can grab myself as much trip by hook as i could possibly do i've got a couple of bottles of water because this is also my brewing platform where 
I've got myself a bit of helpful potions just in case a bit of a PvP happens in the future. As well as that, we also have myself an automatic sugarcane farm which is hiding behind this wall here. And we also have a bed here. Now there is also a little lever or a little redstone torch section. So I have a little bit of an escape away from this base in case someone finds it. The next clip is going to be about the mold grinder. Now I do apologize. A lot of these videos have been recorded out of sequence because uh, I've been a little bit busy. Uh, and I've had a couple of issues on the server. The mod grinders had a bit of an upgrade thanks to Jam Doggy, who sent me over a screenshot of how the best way of doing a mob grinder is and how to get mobs very quickly transformed. The only issue that I've got is because mine is too wide for spiders. Sometimes a mod will sometimes a mob will always drop down in between all the fence posts, which means we always have at least one loss. But the rest of them look like they're still moving. Perfect. Right, so the plan is the mobs go along here, they get pushed along, then go down here, and surprisingly, they go back up here and get knocked into there. I have a feeling they're just the right size that they don't get trapped by the block here and then they shoot up. I think that's the idea. Right, let's see if this works. So I'm going to just get rid of this little section here, which would stop any mobs from spawning, which is probably a good idea. I don't really want any mobs spawning. And then let's check the efficiencies of this farm. So I've added those modifications in. Let's press the pressure plate, which will send the mobs down by this lovely chute. Here they come. Down they come. Now I want to see, do they get held up at this location when we've just done the modification? Or does it now work a little bit better? Uh, probably having that one single air block probably didn't help. That's a bit better. They're going a lot more efficiently. They're not staying in the area. The only problem is they're going down in the hole. <laughs> That's the problem with it with my farm because I've got a two wide because of spiders. You will get one or two that's doing that, but it shows they are going a lot better and they're hiding away. Now, the only problem is we're still going to fix this section, but that's not looking too bad. Actually, I think there's a way that I can fix this. Place two signs on either side of this thing and then place the water bucket on this side, which will then force them over. Yeah, let's do it. Once again, I've pressed myself onto the pressure plate. Let's see what happens. I'm expecting at least one mob to fall down there just because of how it works, how skellies seem to somehow fall down into that one single spot. But so far, it's not looking too bad. Let's have a look, see how this looks much better. We're not getting any of them stuck on this side. But they are getting stuck a little bit further downwards. Okay. That's something I wasn't anticipating. So we need to somehow fix this section right there. Some slight modifications later. Let's have a look and see what we're doing in regards to this. We've got one drowned. <laughs> Just hovering there on top of the single centre of the fence. I suppose it's not being forced up. But I think this whole section is helping them, you know, suck through. But hopefully he'll get pushed along anyway. So you might even get a drowned or a couple down here, but it depends how this all works. Let's see how well this works here. So we've now got the extra section where I've removed the stair block that was here originally and just placed in some uh, lovely old section of signs. Now, hopefully that will mean that the items are just going to come up. Now, we've got a couple of items there, which unfortunately that happened because <laughs> I had to kill the mobs that are up there. But that's a lot better. They're not staying up there. They're coming down to the killing chamber a lot more quicker than what they should have done. And that way we're not having to worry about the mob spawning rates when they're a little bit um, scary. Once again, a big massive shout out to Jam Doggy for sending over the fix for this. I'm not entirely sure who the fix is by, but if you do know, let me know down in the description. But thank you very much, Jam, for sending over this lovely little fix which is definitely what I needed. And now we've got some mobs that are no longer being trapped inside the one single area. God love it. Climbing from level 27 to 33, this farm is definitely doing absolutely superb since we've done the modifications. Now the modifications done here, we still have the drowned problem with this section, but uh, you can stay. I'm happy with that. But when they shoot up here, they are shooting across very quickly. They're not getting stuck anywhere around here. And it just means the farm is a lot more efficient than what it was. That is what I call superb. <laughs>
Uh, the next couple of clips include a time lapse where I do a little bit more transformation of this island. Uh, over the time and over a live long stream of five hours, uh, this whole island has now been transformed apart from Doug's area, which is still lovely mycelium. But that is it, and this is the time lapse. Enjoy! <laughs> of hours later after a lovely live stream thank you very much for the people who came and joined me mr brownstone mountain tiger doug wolf destroy for the raid it all really is appreciated but today we finally managed to complete a little bit more of the sections of grass or terraforming changing the landscape around here because i tell you what this is definitely a thing that we need to do and we've still got a lot more to go and I mean a lot more, but we've done a lot. We've done a lot more than what I was expecting to do, and we've got a lot more to do. But we now have a deadline to meet. <laughs> uh, we're all going to be moving out of this island very soon. On the 30th of November, Minecraft releases Snapshot... Uh, Minecraft releases 1.18 Part 2 which is super super excited I, no don't get me wrong don't get me wrong i'm excited for it i'm also nervous in regards to my build and everything else have i planned out all my build yet no i haven't created the greater well for that have i done everything i want to do in this area no i haven't i've still got all this terraforming to do and all the landscaping and changing all the trees and doing everything else and doing all the custom stuff and doing everything all personally fine and also getting rid of all floating mushrooms no i haven't i've done not any of those but at least we now have a deadline. That means I have some work cut out for me to do. Okay, one of the things that I've been very difficult with is trading with these villagers. Like trying to get food, a reliable food source, is somewhat difficult at times. There we are, you're finally gonna go off to bed, aren't you? No, you're gonna stand in that corner like you are. There's a bed right there. But trading with this villager, it's a way about to tell you the farmer villager is somewhere around here. I bet it's this one here. There we are. It's just this one here. And doing this is fun and everything else. The only problem is it doesn't always provide me enough food. And by the time I run out, I'm having to re harvest and everything else. I just want to automate that. So this area here was going to be my smelter room. I've decided that's going to change. And I'm going to have a bit of a hopper room in here or some sort of room in here that I can then do a farming type area just here. I think I've got nearly everything I need and now it's just a case of building this up. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. Uh, now to make this farmland, of course, I'm going to make sure there's water available for this to reach to. Uh, I could actually use the water as a hopper stream, maybe going into a chest over that side. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we're going to do something like this, and then we'll have our water stream placing in there, which will then go into a hopper just here. That's perfect, which I can then replace out. I then need to do myself a favor, and I need to have an observer facing one of these ways let me grab some cobblestone as well and just plant this along here so the idea is is that you have an observer facing towards this block here leave a gap this block here leave a gap uh zombie limbs your head slightly in the way let's move that out of the way one two and just there i had a couple more but this will do for now and then let me grab my hoe stick, which will be just here. Places out. Now, this is only going to be a very slow farm, but overall it's going to speed up nicely, which is what I wanted to do. So then I'll place in the melon just there. 
I need to place in that there so it grows onto the left. Hopefully it will grow nicely that way and not grow this way. If it does, there's really not much that I can do. I then also need some pistons, which I can grab from here. And I need to place these in on these little sections here, which we can do just that. And that will allow that to grow. Let me also grab some pumpkins. So slight change to this thing. As soon as this detects a growth, which is what it's doing, it'll then grow and then it'll push out these sections here. So it'll always make sure we have that. I should probably also make sure that I have something here just to catch anything here. It's probably not gonna go anywhere, but I don't want it actually going that way. So what I'm gonna do is to make this easier is I'm just gonna, you know, just add a little bit of blockage to that side so at least it will always grow that way that's the plan i want it to grow this way and then we just need to replace these sections here with a hopper and a chest and there we go all done now we're placing the hopper i'm going to place in a barrel instead and that's where our pumpkins and our melons will just pop into which means that at least we have some sort of automated melon farm it's not going to be that efficient but it's going to be enough for me after doing tons of work on the server and people being around this area with a mob farm. This will be enough to get enough food to last me for the rest of this section of this base. This is what I'm doing and I'm currently using a shader pack which I've not used in so long. And this is Seuss Renewed PTGR HR, uh, Seuss PTGR H uh, test. Won the test subject and I'll tell you what, I love this. This whole resource pack makes my life... <laughs> I, I prefer it. I even prefer the water underground. Well, if it wasn't, like, you know, nighttime. Let me just quickly sleep. Let's go into the underground of the water. This is the reason why I like this shader pack. Because in all honesty, you can see and it just looks so much more perfect and more clearer than, you know, Minecraft water. Yeah, you're not great. This is a much better shader pack. So I've been a little bit busy over the last couple of streams. Now you'd have seen some of this in a time lapse, but some of it unfortunately is not in the time lapse because, well, the time lapse wasn't running half the time. So this is what has been done. If I walk over here and just, well, I'm just gonna do this. You can see by literally doing this, that the whole mushroom island has now been changed away from the mushroom block to the non-mycelium. Now there is some mycelium about, as you can probably tell. I've taken a lot of damage there. Gotta love it, gotta love it, gotta love it. Ah. Right, let me go up to here. Okay, so just here, I'm gonna just hover around in this pool for a second. Just here is where we've currently got, and uh, now I am planning on doing this at some point, but I'm hoping Doug will start taking over because this is Doug's area. But the rest of the Mushroom Island has now dramatically changed. It's no longer purple, it's half brown, it's half gr green. And we now have all of this area nicely done, ready for everything going away. Tell you what, I'm gonna go. Ah, oh, I found it, that one! Really? Oh, and by the way, yes, I've got a latest death up there. It's because I died there, but I was in free cam and I went AFK for a sec, so that's the reason why. And I'm gonna land on a mushroom and I nearly died then. I really don't wanna die here, so. <laughs> Gotta have the golden carrot. Now I know today's episode is coming to an end. It's been quite dramatic. I've looked at the amount of clips I've got and something tells me I've overdone it again for today's episode. But hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, do click that like button, click that subscribe button and also join me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash mission 24 7 and I'll see you guys in the very next stream. Until next time, this has been Mum... <coughs> I just said this has been Mumbo and I'm out. No, I'm not Mumbo. This has been Manny Mission and I'm out. See you guys later. Bye-bye.